don't want to think about this. I don't even want to hear about it. I, I just can't believe that something else could happen to Serena. Nothing else is going to happen to Serena. How do you know that? You don't know, Doc. <sighs> I just got Serena all tucked in. Lucy, I know what you're feeling. I just wish that we had one shred of concrete evidence. Is that it? Is that why you met with Rex, to try and get that? Yes. So what did you do? I acted like Mr. Haney on the Green Acres. I didn't want him to get suspicious. So this is now what we're supposed to do, act like we're best friends or something? I don't think I can do that. And I want to tell you something. I don't want to just lump Danielle into this, okay? You don't have to do that, but we do have to stay calm. If I find out that, that Rex had anything to do with this kidnapping, the cops are not going to hear it from me. And then Lucy and I get to raise a child whose father's on death row. I'm just telling you, if Rex had anything, anything to do with this, they won't find his body to convict me. I'll get it. Uh, Dr. Collins, I hope I'm not too late to pay a little visit. I don't know what the big deal is about these martinis. Well, great, then why don't you switch to coffee? Don't need it. I'm wide awake, thank you. And I am just so darn glad we're making up. Me too. <laughs> well, I may as well forget all the snappy patter because the best lines in the world would be wasted on you right now. They would indeed. My stubborn son actually cutting the slack. Time to go home, Mom. Now? Yeah, before you wreck your wipe that drool off his chin. I could go for another one of these babies, with lots of olives this time. I'm getting hungry. You've got early rounds tomorrow, remember? Surgical rotation. Mm -hmm. Of course I do. But don't you see, this moment in time is absolutely golden. The moment of truth. Time for us to really, really find to know each other. And you are going to pay for this golden moment. You're throwing me out. You know, I may have been a sucker, but I'm not an idiot. Please, Jake. Please don't do this. Why not? Because we can get through it. One day we'll wake up and Rex won't be there anymore. It'll just be us in bed with our arms yeah, around each other. You know what? Other. Don't get rid of Rex so soon, because he's the reason you're here. No, that's not true. Sure it is. You told me. Remember? You came here because he made you. But you know what? I don't want it. I'm not that desperate. You and Rex, you're on your own after tonight. Oh, I'm sorry we haven't met. Rex Stanton. Rex Stanton. Kevin Collins, please, come in. Thank you, thank you. I certainly hope I'm not uh, disturbing you. Oh, no, no, you're not disturbing us. Hi, Rex. See? Well, it's just that uh, uh, Danielle and her fiancé don't like it when I drop by. Uh, must be a bad habit of mine. Oh, we don't mind. Well, thank you. And Lucy. Thank you for offering her that job. It was very generous of you. Well, not at all. She um, is a great girl. That she is. But still, you didn't have to take an interest in her. Well, you took an interest in her. Yes, I did. I must admit that I am developing a real attachment to this new family of mine. She's got him laughing. That's a good sign. <laughs> You know, as much as I enjoy this play-by-play, -play, um... Michael Corby, are you trying to get rid of me? Yes, I am, but only because I care. I suppose you're right. Mornings do come awfully early these days. Yeah, well, at least you're not going to have the kind of head she's going to have in the morning. So, is this the real you? Mm, maybe. Uh-huh. You know, there is too much anger in the world. You and I should invent a pill that would take all the... What's the word? Aggression? Yeah, the aggression out of human nature. That way we could make nicey-nice with each other all the time. Hey, you were going to get me another drink. Was I? Oh, uh, look at the time we ought to get you home. Yes, I am nothing if not sensible. Absolutely. And I'm glad you gave up that stupid notion of drinking just to prove something to me. Stupid? Stupid. Why did you have to go and say that? I take it back. Obviously, this isn't your first night drinking. Just when we were having a good time. Condescension. 
It follows me everywhere. Me condescending never. Oh, yes. But I am never stupid, and, and I did prove a point. Which was? People don't know me as well as they think they do. Right. <laughs> I know, I, uh, I wish I could take you home, but I, I, I read in the paper that there's been a lot of purse snatchings in your neighborhood. Oh, just let someone try to steal this purse. Night, Ma. Frank, uh, listen, um, you know, your mom's car is in the shop, and, and I've got to, to close up around here. Could you, could you give her a ride home? Uh, Mike, that is not necessary. I know, but Mary, We I were really... leaving anyway. Uh, Julie's had enough. I have not. Yes, you have. I'll take you both home. More condescension. She's right. No, I can take the bus. You stay with Julie. Ma, if anything happened to you, I would have to clean my own fridge. <laughs> I am not leaving. Mike, would you keep an eye on her for me? Sure thing. I'll be back. Good night, Mary. Good night. I will still take the bus, you know. I do not need and I do not like the mail I have. Hey there. Feeling no pain? Mm. I thought you left. Oh, I did, but... Uh... Waited outside to see if Frank was going to get you home all right, and I just saw him leave with his mom. Does it look like I need keeping? No, no, no. You, you look perfectly ready for surgical rounds first thing in the morning. Hmm. Indubitably. Well, I'm going to go home and bone up on my cases, get some sleep, and be well-rested for the big day. You have fun here. And let you be one up on me? No way. I am coming to... Oh, easy. Easy. <laughs> Did you feel the earth move? No, not tonight. Um. Come on, I'll give you a ride home. I am not drunk. Of course not. Of course not. No, no, you, but you rode your bike, and it's gonna rain. Didn't you know that? Of course I did. You are very kind. You're always thinking of me. I like that in a friend. Come on. Uh, Julie, excuse me, where are you going? Home, James. Uh, but Frank's coming back to get you. It's all right. I'll take care of it. Don't worry. Isn't he nice? Yeah, right. Right. Please, have a seat. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, as I told Lucy, I've uh, never been much of a family man. Uh, I mean, what did it ever get me but uh, thrown out on my tail? But I must admit, seeing you all pulled together like this has made me realize what a family can be. Well, it's the most important thing in life. I can't agree more. And uh, I've grown very fond of Danielle. I think this job is just what she needs. It certainly is a lot better for her than just sitting around that dark, small apartment. Oh, well, I, I saw how worried you were when you stopped by this afternoon. Well, I certainly hope she didn't notice that. Oh, I don't think so. Lucy's just very good on picking up on people's real feelings. <sighs> yeah. But when I tracked Danielle down, I... I was hoping that I might help her. Uh, she seems sort of moody, don't you think? Uh, I do believe she could use some looking after. Well, um, you certainly know her better than we do. Yes, yes, well, I can recognize a Stanton family gene when I see one. Are you a moody one there, Rick? Well, I don't know. You'll have to ask all the girlfriends I never married. <laughs> well, I'm just very glad that Serena doesn't have that characteristic. Well, Scott here must have improved the gene pool. Well, to me, I find Danielle really isn't moody at all. I just think she's um, fragile and very sad. Well, I don't know why. I mean, she's young, she's engaged, uh, she's got a great new job. I mean, things are going her way. But you have to remember, nothing, nothing can ever make up for what my brother did to her. Mm. What else do you know about her, Rex? Well, not a lot. She did tell me she's been having a problem with depression ever since her mother died. Oh, really? How long ago was that? I don't know exactly, uh, but I do know that's when she found out that Avery was her father. Obviously, her mother kept that from her. Just exactly like Catherine Bell. It appears as though my brother had a uh, real problem in the responsibility department. Well, I hope that's not another family trait. Not in me, thank goodness. <laughs> anyway, uh, other than that, I, I, I believe Danielle moved to New York. Met Jake, uh, followed him back here for his internship, and then they got engaged. Uh, I'd hoped that she'd be glad to see me when I, when I looked her up, but it uh, didn't appear to be the case. 
Why do you think she wasn't happy to see you? I don't know. Maybe I remind her of the father that never wanted to know her or take care of her. That's why I'm so pleased that she's accepted your help. Hey, what's all the noise in here? Oh, hey, come on over here. We got a little company. You're really throwing me out? I got nothing left for you to steal. No pride, no self-respect, no love, no trust. You took all that. <laughs> Jake, when I told you that I'd fallen in love with you, that wasn't a lie. Let me get this straight. When you told me you were a starving actress, that was a lie. When you told me that you had no one else in the world, that was a lie. When you told me that you came to poor Charles from me, that was a lie. But when you told me that you loved me, that was the truth? I know how it sounds. There's the door, Danielle. Use it. No. What did you say to me? I'm not leaving. I know you hate me, and um, you have every right to. But if I leave, Rex will do something awful to you. You don't know what he's like. We, um, we have to do what he says. I'm not afraid of him. I didn't used to be either. I didn't see that look that he gets in his eyes. This crazy look. Now you know. Try keeping better company next time. He joked about throwing me off the hospital roof. He's crazy, Jake. By the time I found out, it was too late. If I leave, he will hurt you. I know he now, will. I wish he'd try. He said he could frame me for the kidnapping. He can't, okay? I did some checking. The night that kid was kidnapped, I was being held at gunpoint. Then he'll find something else. Oh, evil Rex, evil Rex. Always pulling your strings like a little puppet. Huh? Making you do all those nasty deeds. You ever heard of personal accountability, Danielle? Or is that too big of a word for you? First mean thing you've ever said to me. That's him. Good. You know, I hope it is. No, let me. Hello? Uh, excuse me? Oh, could you speak more slowly? Yes, um, Jake's right here. It's your mom, she's, uh, she's very upset. Mike, where's Julie? Oh, look, Frank, I'm sorry, but I'm afraid I screwed things up. How? Well, I got you to take your mom home, but then Ramsey came back. You let her go with Chris? I'm sorry, Frank, but she's a big uh, girl. I... Yeah, but she has never had this much to drink before, and Ramsey knows it. If I close one eye, the room doesn't spin quite so much. Here, take this. I don't have a headache. You will in the morning, trust me. Consider it a precautionary measure. You're a good diagnostician. <laughs> you think? Mm. Well, let's see, what do we have here? A uh, case of acute drunkenness. Symptoms are extreme giddiness and incredible charm. I hope it's equally apparent to the senior surgical resident. I hear he's a stinker. Oh, I have to study now. Right, why don't you do that in bed? It would feel good to lie down, I think. <laughs> Mm -hmm. ah. mm -hmm. You need any help? Nope, I got it. <laughs> Size eight. Perfect. Mm. My dad is a 13. Pretty big shoes to fill. Don't get me wrong, I love him. He's a good dad and a great surgeon. Only a size 13. Man, that's... Well, I'm sure the scalpel didn't fall too far from the tree. I hope you're right. Mm. Mm. 